indicating direct support of the women's strike for peace by the Soviets. As you well realize, this item is not only sensitive in its own right, but is particularly so since this agency has no charter to operate within the United States on this kind of matter. Richard Helms, director. Ten years later, the least that can be said is that the government was waging a war on the peace movement. The city of Chicago permitted only one legal demonstration to be held at a band shell four miles from the convention site. It was a peaceful gathering of some 10,000. The Chicago police force got angry when somebody lowered the American flag. The cops made a tactical error. They clubbed several spectators, and they arrested the man who took down the Stars and Stripes. Now the crowd was angry. They turned on the cops. The Chicago police lost a skirmish, but rescued an unmarked patrol car. Angry because the cops had invaded their turf and sensing they could overwhelm the police, the crowd surged against the authorities. But moved marshals called for a restraining line. The police were allowed to retreat. For two nights, the National Guard had held positions in front of the Conrad Hilton Hotel, which housed hundreds of delegates and was the headquarters for the leading candidates. The demonstrators, totally blocked from the convention, made the Hilton and Grant Park across the street from the hotel a rallying point. Michigan Avenue flows north and south here, and the mayor of Chicago was insisting that vehicular traffic not be impaired. The street was to be kept clear. On so small a rule did 1968 climax. Four miles away, there was a convention going on, but the rituals of that meeting were nothing but background noise. All of these state banners are being held high now, the state markers. Here, except those of three states, as nearly as we can tell, four states, Nebraska, California, Colorado, and Wisconsin, banners are not up. There may be one or two others on the far side of the... The greater scene was not at convention hall. A cast of thousands was assembled, cameras, lights, and in that crowd, at least 200 undercover agents. The explosion was about to begin. The picture you are watching was never put on the air because it has an engineering fault. But in it, it revealed everything that broke apart 1968. Our cameras were at the corner of Michigan and Balbo at 745. The demonstrators had blocked traffic. The mayor's orders were to clear the intersection. A policeman, surrounded in the crowd, sent out the signal 10-1, which meant officer in trouble. stop the war, unable to get to the convention, unarmed against the police, the demonstrators, in the non-violent tradition, sat down. Later, official exhaustive investigation would call this a police riot. The Walker report said the provocations did not deserve the kind of force the police unleashed.
president by less than a half million votes. Less than a... These scenes. They saw America in disarray. They blamed the Democrats. Put it in November. Nor forgave either side. It is the only time a politician can afford to tell the truth is after he's defeated. The, of the, United States the pictures are from 1968. But eight years later, Hubert Humphrey spoke about what happened to him and to America. What really was the, the, the tragedy of the whole thing for me at that time was the Chicago experience. The trouble with the police and the students. Uh, the whole environment of politics had come apart. I mean, it had become polluted and destroyed and violent and uh, bad, just bad. And I tried to put it together. Mr. Chairman. I had an acceptance speech written and I had dances that had taken place. And I, my, I my literally prayed that I could get a hold of that audience and not have them Mr. walk Chairman. out on me. Because of the humiliation of it, the, the, the incredible humiliation of it. My fellow Americans, my fellow Democrats, I proudly accept the nomination of our party. And I did get a hold of them. But I knew that there had been lasting damage done there. After he was elected, Nixon is reported to have said, we didn't win, they lost. I'll tell you who you are. You're Republicans, you're Democrats, you're Independents. You come from all segments of the American economy. And you are people who have been forgotten in America because you've been quiet. You've been quiet because you've been going to work and you've been paying your taxes, you've been supporting your schools, you've been supporting your churches. And what you have found is that because you have been forgotten, you have not been heard, because you have not been speaking out. And now what is happening is that a lot of people in this country, good Americans, decent Americans, Americans who care about this country, the great mass of Americans who have been forgotten now are speaking out. They're speaking out with their voices you have tonight. They're speaking out with their numbers. And on November the 5th, they're going to turn out those that have been in Washington, D.C. and give this country new leadership. He was right. America did vote the rascals out and reluctantly voted Nixon in. For his part, Lyndon Johnson wasn't sorry to go. President me, uh, uh, when the, you weren't president anymore. And I now or not. Uh, on that platform and waited for you to stand up and raise your right hand and take the oath of office. And the most pleasant words that I ever, that ever came into my ears was, so help me God, that you repeated after that oath. Because now I could ride back down that avenue, being concerned about what happened, being uh, alarmed about what might happen, but just uh, really knowing that uh, that I wasn't going to be the cause of it, that that went over to some other man. And that's a feeling that I don't think you'll ever know.
1968 slipped into 1969. Organized a counter riot force of 15,000 men. The outgoing administration wanted no complaints from the incoming team, but security had been lax. A small minor demonstration, which in the words of an army operative, was well within the capacity of the police to handle. But the extensive precautions included tight uniform security, and videotaping. Though the demonstration was kept in control, Richard Nixon was angry that it had happened at all. At the inauguration were H.R. Haldeman and John Ehrlichman would later bring their own intelligence apparatus into a reorganized White House. It was what is called the orderly transfer of power. The American people had voted in a new president and a new future. They hoped the excesses of 1968 were now over. You, Richard Milhouse, Nixon, do swear. I, Richard Milhouse Nixon, do solemnly swear. That you will faithfully execute the office that I will faithfully execute the office of president of president of the United States. And will to the, the best democratic process had worked. And will to the, the Nixon best years of my had begun.